Hello everyone, my name is Sik and welcome to a brand new series. So today the game we will be playing is called 80 Days. <coughs> and 80 Days is a game, it's been out for a while, it, is, it originated as a mobile game I believe and eventually it made its way to PC. And the reason I wanted to play this game is because it's a game about traveling. And the people who know me, they know that I am a huge fan of traveling. I have spent the last five years of my life basically completely dedicated to travel. If I wasn't traveling, then I was working to go traveling. You know, I was saving up money, getting um, visas and all that kind of stuff. And basically, yeah, the entire past five years of my life, even if I haven't been traveling all the time, they have been completely dedicated to traveling. At the moment, I'm at home in the Netherlands due to some unforeseen circumstances. I should actually have been in Australia at the moment. But I had to return home and yeah, I'm going to be staying here for a while because, well, a lot of things happened in my personal life and I've been saying goodbye too many times recently. And um, it's just time to stay at home and try to build something. But I still really do love traveling. And I will be doing some traveling again in the future, though. Maybe not for the same lengths of time that I've been traveling in the past. And um, in comes an adventure game like 80 Days. 80 Days is a game that is heavily inspired by, or basically completely inspired by, the same day, or basically it's based on a novel written by Jules Verne. It's called 80 Days Around the World. And that's the goal of this game as well. We have to travel around the world in exactly 80 days or less to win a bet. And so we'll be, we will be going from place to place. Uh, there will be branching storylines and stuff like that. That's basically the entire thing about this game is you have branching storylines every time or a lot of times. <laughs> you never really know what's going to happen, which is exactly what travel is about if you do it the right way, as far as I'm concerned. Me, I'm a hitchhiker. I hitchhike everywhere. I don't know where I'm going to be at every at the end of every day. I don't know what kind of people I'm going to meet. I don't know where I'm going to sleep, what I'm going to eat, uh, what the plan for the next few days is going to be. Um, yeah, it is an awesome existence. I love it. I love I love hitchhiking, and I want to have experiences like this, even if I'm stuck at home, like like I'm I am right now. I want to have to be able to play a game that reminds me of the adventure that life on the road can offer me. So in this game we will be playing as a, a gentleman called Passepartout. He is um, basically a manservant to, um, yeah, he ha like it says, it's London, 1872. I have entered into the service of a new gentleman, it would seem he is a gambling man. <laughs> Alright, let's get started. Inkle presents. Look at this this big beautiful world of ours. <laughs> so there's a lot of branching storylines, as you can see, as um, as I said, and there's going to be um, a few different options available to us at every, basically at every every town or city that we go to. So, I'm curious to see what it's going to end up being like this time around. Because I did play this game personally or privately one time before. London. That is where we start. That is where we will have to end as well. Let me just go into the settings here and bring down the volume a little bit. This, this button, I suppose. Yep, yeah, there we go. Alright, so we start in London. And, um... No, oh, it's still a little bit loud. Let me go back in here really quickly. There we go. That's a little bit better. So, this is heavily inspired by the novel written by Jules Verne. And Jules Verne is very famous for, um, basically writing novels about things that had not actually existed at the time, but they did exist later on in time. So for example, or like one of the easiest examples of that, um, is the novel 20,000 Leagues Underneath the Sea, which is an awesome novel, by the way. 
and I urge you to read it. But it's basically about um, uh, yeah, people. There's a, they want to go into an expedition because they heard t talk of a whale, um, and a really aggressive whale that would sink ships and stuff like that, and they want to find it. So a guy goes onto an expedition to find this whale. His ship got sunk as well, and it turns out that the thing that sunk his ship was actually a submarine. And at the time of uh, when this novel was written, submarines had never, never even been thought of. It was complete fantasy, basically. And a lot of things that Jules Verne wrote about started off as complete fantasy, but they actually happened later on in the real world. Which leads many people to speculate about how he came to that kind of knowledge, you know? Like, how did he find out uh, about these things? How did he come up with the, these ideas? Anyway, completely different novel. <laughs> I say we begin with 80 days. We start in London. Begin. There is no narration in this game, by the way. So I will be narrating everything myself. And I hope I will do an okay job at it. But we'll see. Monsieur Phileas Fogg returned home early from the Reform Club, and in a newfangled steam carriage besides. I helped him down, and the iron-lunged, steam-driven horses clattered away. Passepartout, he said he, we are going around the world. <laughs> and now I, am, I have options and choices, and a big thing about this game as well is it's not only managing, managing time, it's also managing a relationship with, um, with Mr. Phileas Fogg, basically. So I can say very good monsieur or around the world monsieur and I will go for around the world monsieur. I asked, utterly astonished. We shall circumnavigate the globe within 80 days. He was quite calm as he proposed this wild scheme. We live for Par we leave for Paris on the 825 in an hour. But we have not prepared. You are in jest. This was a shocking turnabout. <laughs> um Let's say, yeah, I've not prepared. I said wretchedly, quickly trying to organize a list of necessi necessary items in my mind. Then do it now. Pack an altometer and my evening jacket. There is not a moment to waste. You, Passepartout, now have funds, and our character is now steadfast. All right. Not sure what that is going to end up being like, or how that is going to help us, but I think it's going to help us. You know, being steadfast in the face of adversity is always good. I try to live my life in that same way. Sometimes you have to be when you're hitchhiking because things never really go according to plan because it's a, it's impossible to plan for. So whatever you come across, you need to be able to deal with it with a calm mind. So I think that's a very good trait for our character to have. New routes have discovered. London to Paris. Quick passport to collect our things and we will be off. Okay, so we can pack. There is a pocket automator. Uh, we have a limited space, right, okay, so what does this do? Valuable in Vienna, Paris and Copenhagen, inscribed with Marx, describing a recording of a symphony. So we could sell this in Paris, apparently. We have an evening, evening jacket, which we should take for, uh, for Monsieur Fogg. A pocket altometer, our traveler set, we have to take this as well, I suppose. And then we could take playing cards of interest to humorous stalwarts, official and soldier types. So this could help us out in certain situations. European shipping timetable, routes for ships in Europe will be visible on the globe. That could be very useful. But it will take up our entire, all the space that we have. We have wool trousers, uh, wool shirts, evening jackets. So now this set is complete. Pocket altometer. There's a part of the air traveler set. We also need to manage our money. So I don't know. This could be very good. The wax cylinder could also be very useful. And the playing cards could be useful as well. You never really know. We will later on get the ability to buy new suitcases as well. Though sometimes you will have to leave it behind. Because if we travel on a train that only allows one or two suitcases and we have three. Then we have to either pay more money or leave one behind. But... Yeah, we only have 4,000 pounds to start off, so let's see, Europeans, this could be very good, but otherwise we have to go on across land. We could also get sunk on the sea, which would be very bad. 
all the shipping routes within Europe, though. That is very powerful. Wool shirts, yeah, we, I do want to have him to have proper clothes, because his health can go down and he can die. We don't want that. The pocket automator, air traveler, so we can go by plane. Air sickness is psychological, an automator can be most reassuring. <laughs> Okay, so this would be interested only if we go by by air. And if I have the European shipping timetable, I think I'll be going by sea. So maybe I will leave the pocket automator, take the wax cylinder and sell it in Paris. Alright, so what do we do now? Like that. New routes discovered. Amsterdam to Covent and Nice to Rome. Venice to, oh wow, Athens, Izmir, Stockholm to Helsinki, no? Yeah, Helsinki and St. Petersburg or Warsaw. Our completed Englishman's wardrobe should help us negotiate times of upper class journeys. Interesting. We must discover our route as we go. Onwards. <laughs> Alright, let's depart. There's only one real option at the moment, which is to go to Paris by train. So, yeah, let's embark. Departing now. The guard's van has space for one suitcase, which will suffice. Travel, this looks like a bearable option. All right. The Amphitrite Express, which is a mechanical horse. <laughs> Interesting. This is a kind of a... they did change some stuff around to be like steampunk, which the original novel was not, I believe. I never read the original 80 Days Around the World novel. But yeah, I think the steampunk theme is, is exclusive to this game. The mechanical horses race past Piccadilly Circus and Pall Mall faster than a team of thoroughbreds. Even so, the whistle of the A25 was blowing as we pulled up at the, the Charing Cross station. We have no tickets, I exclaimed. We raced along the concourse and threw ourselves aboard. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So I think if I go for this, we might lose uh, the A25 uh, train. Or we might throw ourselves on board, and then we might have to pay more. Oh. Uh, man. Already a tough choice. But I think the we pulled... it's already blowing. I think it's almost going, yeah, it's, let's throw ourselves on board, right? Let's go for the most adventure. We raced along the concourse and threw ourselves aboard as the second whistle shrieked its warning. We barely had time to take our seats before the guard rapped smartly on the compartment door. He held out a hand. Tickets, please. Alas, monsieur, we were in a great hurry, or I pretended to have lost them. That's not going to help us, because they don't really care. We can explain it, which they probably also don't really care about. You know, rules are rules and all that, but um, let's see if we can actually, you know, use our vocabulary skills. Alas, monsieur, we were in a great hurry, I explained, giving him a beseeching look. We did not have time to buy tickets. You may purchase them for me, the guard was saying, though it is more expensive, I'm afraid. 85 pounds, please. I argued with him, or I handed over the 85 pounds. I think arguing with him is not going to help us in any way. Let's say, let's stay civil and say we hand over the 85 pounds. I handed over the 85 pounds and smiled a thin smile from one working man to another. The guard gave me our tickets and slid the compartment door shut behind him with a pneum pneumatic hiss. Your funds have gone down somewhat. Indeed. I am on fine form, but we must make haste. Alright, we can converse. I am at your service, Monsieur Falk. Passepartout. Begin conversation about money. Or journey. I don't really care about money. Let's talk about the journey. But tell me, Monsieur, what is the purpose of our journey? I have made a hefty wager and I do not intend to lose. Alright, then, ah, we can still talk about money, so that's fine. This journey will be most expensive, Monsieur. Indeed, but we can earn a little from buying and selling our possessions as we travel. Very good. That is fine. London smog gave way to rolling hills and the pastures of the Kentish countryside, still untouched by the hand of techno technological advancements. Monsieur Fogg read his paper whilst I repacked our bags, or we passed the day in silence. 
I think repacking our you know, I don't think repacking our bag is going to do much, but passing the day in silence also isn't really good. So I might as well take some uh, yeah, do some practical stuff, right? Monsieur Fork read his paper whilst I repacked our bags, thrown together in haste and confusion. As afternoon turned inexorably to evening, I discovered that my master was one of those gentlemen who broke their silence rarely, if at all. A guard rapped on our door, a few miles before Dover. We are about to submerge, he warned. Take some people a bit funny, so watch out. <laughs> uh, what do you mean, submerge? But it is safe, is it not? Very good. Alright, I think I'll go for very good. I want to keep my stalwart trait, so um, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to be scared. I'm not going to be flustered or anything like that. Let's say just very good. I replied, as though submerging inside a thousand-ton metal train was quite ordinary for me. If you feel claustrophobic, the guard replied, try running up and down the corridor. I always find the exercise helps. With that, he closed the door. I could not help shiver. I pressed my face to the window glass. Would Monsieur Fogg be claustrophobic? So I could look after Monsieur Fogg. He could take that in a really good way, or he could take that kind of in a bad way, if he thinks we're being fussy about him. Uh, I press my face to the window glass. You know, this is his idea. I have to, I'm roped along, so let's say I press my face to the window glass. As the fins above the Amphitrite's wheels extended with a hydraulic hiss. Night fell and we plunged past the end of the track into the freezing water of the English Channel. Your character is now dependable. Also, very much like myself, <laughs> if I do say so myself. You don't have to take my word for it though. You don't have to believe me. You seem quite handy man a quite ha quite a handy man to have around, Pasper 2. Thank you very much. The M I tried to plow plowed through the water overnight and splashed up onto wider gauge French tracks at Calais as dawn broke. Do you have a route in mind, Monsieur? Or I began to consider what we might require for our journey. Now I'm going to ask about the route. As the water of the channel dried from the compartment windows. <laughs> I am as yet undecided, my master admitted. The new, cha the new canal, canal has sped up the shipping route from Suez to Bombay. Though perhaps we could take the Trans-Siberian Railway across Russia. Surely not Bombay, surely not Siberia. <laughs> Uh, I think we're set for um, for going across sea, so I think the best thing to go is uh, take the shipping route from the Suez to Bombay. We shall certainly wilt in the scorching heat. Then we could do well to buy hats and linen trousers, he replied. There are other alternatives. We may also travel, travel over land and across the Black and Caspian Seas. But which is the fastest? <laughs> Not the safest. I don't care about the safest. I want to have adventure, goddammit. I believe, said he, that is what we shall put to the test. Parbleu. <laughs> I scarcely knew what to think. We arrived at Paris Gare du Nord just after one o'clock. Automate and porters lifted our luggage and then our persons onto the platform with long, delicately filigreed iron arms. Paris. City of my heart. I was at home, but not to stay. New routes discovered. Suez to Bombay, right? Or Jeddah, Aden, Bombay. Now we have Moscow to Ekaterinburg, Omsk, Irkutsk, Karimskaya. I don't quite catch or caught the other names. But we have arrived in Paris. Some of our possessions should be quite valuable here. We'll have to explore Paris to find an onward journey. Alright, we could go to the bank, which will take two hours. We need to explore if I want to sell, which I do want. Or the market, actually. We could go to the market straight away. Uh, we could get an extra suitcase for £10. That could be very useful. Geometry equipment, valuable in Copenhagen, Warsaw and Budapest. A shaving kit, part of the filleting set. We could use this for a hundred days apparently. It's only four pounds, but it takes up space. Traveling cloak, the gentleman traveler set. Okay, and then we have Chateau de Quim wine. Worth 2300 in Berlin. Holy shit, and it only costs us 32 pounds. That is crazy. Hmm. But we can sell our wax cylinder for 470. So let's do that first of all. But then we have the 
geometry equipment, which is not something we can use, I don't think. The shaving kit could be good. The traveling cloak as well, but it takes up a lot of space, which you do not have. We could buy the extra suitcase, I think. Close the luggage. How do we buy the extra suitcase? I can't click anything here. Tucked away, yeah. Favorite market streets, that's fine. Can I just drag stuff in here? Buy for 22. Yep, that's good. All right, then we can have the shaving kit as well. Let's put it in this suitcase. And Copenhagen, we're not going there. Warsaw, not really, I don't think. And Budapest. You know what, let's maybe return here after a while. We need to... The bank opens at 10 a.m. We could stay in the hotel for one day. Go to market again. What time is it now? It's 6.50. All right, oh, it's p.m. It takes a long time, or oh, it's almost night, so we have to go to the hotel and continue on the next day. We'll pass the night here. Yeah, we took a hotel for the night. We will be comfortable here, Monsieur Falk remarked, but traveling overnight will often be more efficient. So we must board to the longest journeys available, or where possible. No, we're going for the longest journeys available, perhaps, he replied, the short answer indicating, I think, that one-day journeys might often be more flexible in their timing and could allow for more connections. That's good to know. Still, the surrounds of the Hotel Ritz were most enjoyable. The clock is ticking, Passepartout. We must decide our next steps quickly, so we have to explore. Maybe I should have done that to begin with. New routes discovered. We can go to Amsterdam. We had a few hours to spare. I asked Monsieur Fogg if I might enjoy my city before we had to leave. Indeed. And you should learn and should you learn anything of note, be sure to relay it. I nodded and headed into town. The talk on the streets was of one thing only, an enormous, elegant oval stadium, constructed upon the green fields of Champ de Mars and containing the technological marvels, arts, amusement parks and milling crowds of the World's Fair of 1872. My city still wore the scars of last year's siege. I ventured inside, but I was certain Monsieur Falk did not intend for me to visit fairs. Um, let's go. Let's talk a little bit about the siege of Paris. That seems interesting. As the, the, my city still wore the scars of last year's siege, as did I. Paris and France had surrendered to the Prussian army after four and a half months of grim, blood-soaked resistance in the Franco-Prussian War. Now, this World's Fair was intended to reassure the country citizens, or I put away my memories of those grim days. Yeah, let's do that. Of red meat stew and artillery bombardments, and I gazed instead at the grand illuminated pavilions of the exposition. An artificer was replacing an arc light, or I went west towards the airship hangar. Um, we could talk to the artificer, or we could go to the airship hangar and maybe get some more routes. That could be useful. But no, I think we're going by, by sea, right? We already talked about that. So maybe let's talk to the artificer. Who was replacing an arc light which had burned out. <laughs> she first disconnected the strange machine powering the lights. It had a spinning iron wheel which was wound around with a series of armature coils. What is that device, artificer? Or I merely watched politely, not wanting to disturb her work. No, I want to know what that device is. My eyes straying to the copper lily pin which proclaimed her profession. It's a bloody bleeding nuisance is what it is, the artificer grumbled in a thick Yorkshire accent. These gram machines are finicky beasts. Gram machines? Is that so? I have often found that to be the case. <laughs> well, if I had to ask about what it is, I cannot say I have often found that to be the case. So let's ask, as, is that so? Oh yes, and the bleeding Jabloch cough candles only last two hours. Not like I have anything better to do, eh? I retreated hastily, not at all in terror of her irate tone. The harshness of her tone was belied by her gentle touch. Yep. As she unscrewed the arc light's globe of enameled glass and replaced the two carbon rods within, she reconnected the supply and the ten Yablochkov candles <laughs> connected in series lit up once more. They are miraculous. Will all the streets be lit with electricity soon? No, let's go for Miraculous, I breathed. The artificer snorted, their hard work is what they are, miracles indeed. But her mouth softened into a small, proud smile. She looked at her pocket watch, 
cursed and hurried off, dropping something as she went. I hurried after her to return it, or I pocketed it. Now, I'm going to return after her. Or I'm going to hurry after her and return it. And she thanked me. My medallion. I'll need that to get my lunch from the canteen. Thank you. I bowed in return, and she giggled. Stop that, you'll make me blush. <laughs> oh, romance options. She rubbed the coin thoughtfully. I was given this for my work in Istanbul, you know. I made a very special automaton. I think it works as a driver now, on the route up from Izmir. I think that's right. An automaton who can drive. Of course, is that so strange? I could only shrug. Who knows what is normal in this modern world? I looked about me once more. The avenue sprawled in every direction between the inviting illuminated pavilion pavilions of the exposition. I headed towards the red and purple tents of the Artificer Guild. Um, I took a stroll down the Avenue of Nations. I went west towards the Airship Hagar, but this was all too much for me. Hmm. That's a lot of options. So we already talked to someone from the Artificer's Guild. I think we're going down towards Izmir already to begin with. Maybe take a stroll down the Avenue of Nations. Maybe there's something interesting over there. Lined with buildings in the styles of the nations of the world, and manned by foreign delegates in national dress. Although the newly formed German Empire was a conspicuous absentee, or a most eclectic sight. No, let's, let's say the most, or the German Empire was a conspicuous absentee. In the city it had so recently conquered. The Austro-Hungarian delegation was being harangued by an artificer. Harangued? Is that the right word? Or the Sulu Federation has built had built a replica village. I think we're going down towards Africa, or the vicinity of Africa. So maybe... Yeah, talk to the Sulu Federation. And brought a delegation of 400 diplomats and warriors, which was considering the French soldiers, made for a busy, impressive stand. Yep. Above the display was a fine pharaoh type of the great emperor, Kachweo, in his palace in Olundi. One of the young Impi war warriors dropped his first look or a little wooden automaton shaped like a bird. Now, let's talk to one of the MP war warriors, if possible. And winked brightly at a passing child, who erupted into shy giggles. One of his fellow soldiers caught me looking. You have made a powerful friend. Yeah, let's say you have made a powerful friend. I remarked to the child, who seemed startled to receive this news and ran off into the crowd. I turned away hurriedly. That did not turn out as I thought it would. Damn it, I thought this would maybe uh, open up an option to talk to the MP warrior there. Crowds of tourists jostled and heaved past, their eyes wide with wonder. Okay, I decided to take my leave and return to Manche Fogg, who was eating a meal of plain boiled beef like Anglaise. Did you enjoy the exposition? My master inquired diffidently, as though I had been out visiting an aged great aunt. <laughs> Having preferred a hearty meal and an English new newspaper, or and I nodded. I did not actually go to the exposition, I don't think. No, I did not. Having preferred a hearty meal and an English newspaper to all the wonders that the modern world had to offer. Nothing else could possibly impress me now. I don't think that's going to be true. We are unspeakably lucky to live in such an age of invention. Yep, I declared. It will certainly make it easier to win my wager, Monsieur Fogg replied mildly. Monsieur Fogg does not seem to have the urge for travel and to, s to see new and exciting things like I do. He, f he seems to be just like, okay, I'll stay in my hotel, I'll read a newspaper, and, you know, not taking the time to explore Paris, I mean, come on, that's not an option. I dreamed that night of mechanical wonders and automatons with beautifully enameled faces, knowing little of the strange inventions and stranger peoples I would soon encounter in my journey around the world. New routes discovered. Izmir to Istanbul. Departed for Beirut, okay. We have to depart, right away. Hurry up, Passport 2, drone drop those cases. Yep. We could go to Amsterdam, but no. We could take the train to Munich, and then to Vienna, which we also don't want to do. I want to go to Nice. It arrives Saturday. It is today. It is first day. Oh, really? Amsterdam arrives today. This arrives tomorrow. It takes 170. This takes 75. And we could go up to... Christiana in Norway. Hmm. What's this? Oh, these are other people traveling as well, I think. Yeah. Because there's kind of like a, a persistent online thing going on. And what you can see here is other people 
traveling along. So, let's see. This would arrive tomorrow, which would be good. This would only take... Uh, this departs also in two days. Wow, that is really bad. And then it arrives Saturday. So that would be a lot of time spent in Paris. I want to... I want to leave, I think. But then is the question. Do we want to go through Budapest? We could go through Norway and then to St. Petersburg, through Helsinki, then go to Moscow and then go a really long distance over here. Maybe that will be the better option. So, this arrives today. Let's go to Amsterdam. The car roof has space for one suitcase, but we have to hire a second car for 44. Yeah, man. That's a lot of money. We really did make a lot of money selling our stuff and I do want to keep the traveler's cloak so maybe a second car would be okay for 44 pounds or open the luggage European shipping timetable um, maybe this would be okay to dump for now or not no I want to keep this so let's close the luggage embark and hire a second car which now has space for four suitcases, which is ample. The open road, this looks like a bothersome route. So his health will go down by minus five. That's fine. I don't really care. He can take a little discomfort. Hopefully the car won't break down along the way. We found a member of the coach Coachmaker's Guild to carry us to Amsterdam. She loaded the cases onto the back, stoked the boiler and took off with high speed along the coastal road, swerving around each corner with considerable skill and I think a touch of recklessness recklessness, some glee at her discomfort, a touch of showmanship. Uh, not recklessness, no. Yeah, pro it's, it's probably a little bit of everything, really, <laughs> you know. Um, some glee at our discomfort. I clung on tight. This would be a terrific ride. Your ch character is now sharp. Interesting. We can wait or converse. Let's converse. Greetings, driver. I cannot drive well if you are talking to me. Begin conversation about Amsterdam to Christiania. I think that would be interesting, yeah. We have a timetable for routes from Amsterdam to Christiania. You mentioned boats. I've been told Cairo can be reached on Beirut aboard the merchant trader Nefertiti. Interesting. Then we have... Oh yeah, we could... We, yeah, we need to be able to go from Christiania to Stockholm. So let's ask her about that. Is it possible to go from Christiania to Stockholm? Yes, you can get to Stockholm from Christiania aboard the Louise of Sweden. Alright, cool. And then we Stockholm to Warsaw. It says in my timetable that one can travel from Stockholm to Warsaw. You mentioned boats. I've been told my aunt once took the merchant trader Nefertiti from Antalya to Alexandria. Warsaw to Odessa. That's in Russia. You talk a lot, don't you? <laughs> okay, goodbye. So we can go from Christiania to Stockholm, that's good. Then there's a route from Antalya to Beirut and then to Alexandria and Cairo. Once or twice the metal rimmed wheels lifted the chassis clear from the road on one side, only to bump down after a chuff and puff more of the engine. We were jolted around like so much poultry, or we must have topped 40. 40, perhaps even 50 miles an hour. A fabulous way to travel or a ghastly state of affairs. No, a fabulous way to travel, of course. The Polish inventor Bozek, who had first attached a perfectly decent locomotive engine underneath a flimsy wooden crate, was clearly a genius. <laughs> Indeed. Such cars were growing in popularity. And my good friends, if I were not destined to be a valet until the day I have grey hairs in my ears, I would travel forever, maybe? Yeah, let's talk about that. Until I have grey hair hairs in my ears, I would become a car driver. I would become a mechanic. No. I would become a car driver and gad the rich and famous around the mountains of the south of France every day between the hours of 2 and 6. <laughs> Does such a role exist? Perhaps I will invent it if not. Toot toot. <laughs> as we added along, I spoke to our driver. Oh, we already did that. I watched the driver as we rode, hoping to learn her secret should I get the opportunity to drive one for myself. Your character is now dependable. I already was, but maybe that stacks. So that would be good. It's always good to learn more skills in this world. The evening jacket could earn us well here. We need to stay in the hotel for one day. It's already 10.15 p.m. Or we could plan. 
yeah, let's plan. So Christian sent arrives Sunday. It's now Thursday, really. Wednesday. And simply Saturday. Lots of days in between. This, I can go from Helsinki to St. Petersburg in the same day. Or what? Saturday, Wednesday. Oh, it's the same for, for both of these. Let's see, let's zoom out a little bit. Then we have Minsk, 880 miles away. St. Petersburg to Moscow could be good. And then we have a long, long trip to Ekaterinburg. We could also maybe go through Berlin, if that's easier. This is not very expensive though, so it departs in two days, depart from Stockholm, or we could go to Copenhagen maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Let's go back to Amsterdam, and then go to the hotel, let's uh, pass the night, it's already day four. Though the people of Amsterdam move about its canal side streets with a sense of optimism and good cheers, I felt no pressing need to linger, one look at their buildings tells another story, or our own mission left little time for exchanging pleasantries. Um, let's talk about our buildings in the Netherlands a little bit. Let's see what <laughs> Baspertu has to say. Perhaps 200 years ago this was the center of the world, but these days tulips are no longer considered more valuable than gold, or the Sulu diamond fields have drawn away the trade. Yeah, let's, let's say that. And the importance of Amsterdam is a little faded. I sympathize, being, being sure. I have no idea how to pronounce that. France's own position has been precarious since the war with Prussia or the debacle with Napoleon. Yeah, the, the debacle with Napoleon. Apparemment, apparemment, it is uh, apparently, I guess in French, it is a most ill-advised venture to attempt to conquer all of Europe and Russia besides. Would I walk along the Seine one day, or the Seine? Thinking back to our days of lost glory, I approached the street peddler. Yep, for advice, who greeted me with a cheerful smile beneath a caterpillar-like mustache. We are going around the world. What is the cheapest way out of the city? What is the fastest way on from here? Yep, I asked. Car, I suppose. The roads are good. The canals used to be better, but now they seem almost out of date. He sighed. It is a purse to be rich in the past. Or it is a curse to be rich in the past. By the time the future rolls around, you are poor again. I find the rich mostly stay rich. Definitely true. He shrugged, and I began to wonder whether that truism would apply to my master after our journey was done. Good question, indeed. Travel takes up a lot of money, as I know from experience. The peddler reached into his pocket. Buy an apple? One pound. I bought it, and I shook my head. Yeah, let's buy an apple. I took it with a smile. We are going around the world. What's the cheapest way out of the city? I asked. He mused. Most likely the Hydrofall heading north to Norway. He shrugged. It is fine though, or it's fine enough if you don't mind being jolted about. Is Norway worth visiting? I think so. I went to Norway. I traveled to a lot of places myself, but Norway is really, really beautiful. He shrugged and made a fake gesture. I hear the Norwegians are moving underground. Who knows? They have strange ways over there. There was, of course, the route following the canal south. In particular, the, ro the route towards the Rhine, though I feared that to end up in Munich after nearly a week of travel would hardly please my hard driving master. Or, though I feared that to end up in Munich after nearly a week of travel. Okay, so many choices. All that remained was to choose how best to depart. And our funds have gone down a touch. Okay, so we have a bunch more options now, which is good. Um. I don't want to explore here anymore. We're already on day four, and we only made it to Amsterdam from London. That's really bad. So we go. We're going to depart. Arrives tomorrow in Copenhagen. Arrives Sunday. It's today. It's Friday. We could. What? No. We're not going to do that. So we have options. We can go and arrive on Sunday, in uh, in Christiania. Arrive Wednesday. So that's another four days. Yeah. That's pretty terrible. Arrive Sunday, so that's two days, and then we could go to Warsaw the next. I think that might be, and then from Warsaw to Minsk probably, and then to Moscow. I think that would be the quickest option. So let's go to Berlin. It's 110 though. Sunday, are these, yeah, Copenhagen and Berlin arrive the same day. Monday, that's terrible. 
Copenhagen though, I don't know if there's going to be a, a better route from here to, to there. Maybe there's going to be a ship from here or a, or a car to Stockholm arrives on Wednesday, so that's Monday, Tuesday, damn it. Arrives next Saturday. That's a week. That's that's bad. So we need to go up. Arrive Sunday, arrive Sunday. You know what? Let's go to Christiana Christiania after all. I think we have to spend a day on a ship here. But maybe, actually, I've been talking for a while now. I think that may be better left for the next episode. So I think I'll leave you guys here. We are in Amsterdam now and we will be going to Christiania on the next episode. See you then.